what does all this mean for running operating systems inside operating systems? Is VirtualBox running in ring 0 or ring 3? OK, good. Yeah. It's not necessarily a real simple question to answer. So most of it is a regular user level program. And depending on what version of VirtualBox and what platform you're running in, all of it could be running in ring 3. It could maybe have some extensions in the kernel. And so what makes sense there, right? So it's mostly a user level program. But what happens when it tries to execute a privileged instruction, because it's running inside it an operating system, that you're running another operating system inside VirtualBox, that's definitely going to have some privileged instructions. That's going to trap into the kernel. And it's either going to be handled by something in user space, or if you're using a version that can modify the kernel as part of installing VirtualBox, well, maybe it's got some code that can run in the kernel to handle it there. But most of it's running in user space, right? So certainly when you're running VirtualBox, you're running one operating system inside another. So here's running Ubuntu on top of Windows, running Windows on top of Mac OS X. And we could, within this one, run another VirtualBox and another operating system. We certainly, if it's doing what it's supposed to, the code that's running in here should not be able to have impact on programs and processes and memory that is outside of the, the guest OS. Yes? How is the guest OS actually running? I think, is that what you're asking? Yeah. So, right. So you didn't have to make changes to the version of Windows that you're running inside VirtualBox. Now, sometimes to get an OS to run inside a virtual environment, you had to make some changes to it. Let me tell you about two different ways that virtualization is done that I think will answer that question, what, what we were going to get to next. Um, but we'll get back to the question if they don't. So virtualization is, is not at all a new idea. So it goes back to at least the 60s that people were running guest OSs on top of host OSs. And the way the early ones all worked were that you would run the guest OS. So the guest OS is running without privileges. When it executes some privilege instruction, it's going to jump into the host OS. It's going to jump to some handler there, which either, and this is where the point that you had, either you've patched the host OS, so you can do this virtualization program right in kernel level, and that's going to make things a lot easier and maybe more efficient. This could be running in either user space or kernel space. And what that program that you jump to now does, well, it's got the privilege instruction that was attempted to execute. It can see the entire state of the guest OS, and it's going to emulate what that privilege instruction would do. So if we think about those control registers, right, so we have on the processor, we have the real control registers right, that control whether you're in kernel or user space. In order to virtualize the OS, if we're going to run the guest OS, well, within this virtual environment, we've got to have somewhere in software that simulates that register. And that simulated software version of the control register and hardware is what the VMM will have to do when it emulates that privilege instruction. It, it can't actually modify the real CR0, but it has its own copy of it, which is what, when programs running inside the guest OS look at CR0, that's what they see. That means the hardware running is not seeing that, so it's going to trap on the privilege instruction, because right? it's running at, at level user level, level 3. But the VMM is going to say, well, that was really the kernel that I'm simulating, the guest OS, it should be allowed to do that instruction. And what that instruction means in the virtual environment is I'm going to modify you know, some bits in my simulated version of that control register. So that's the, the, the traditional way. And, and this didn't require any hardware support. Uh, it, actually, it does. So it requires setting up these, this trap handler to be able to go to either user level code or code that you've added to the kernel. So it does require some hardware support for that, but nothing beyond that. What happened more recently is Intel and AMD and probably other chip vendors added instructions to support virtualization as part of the processor, as well as some data structures. With Intel processors after about 2005, they added instructions that you could use in a virtualization tool to enter the guest mode, and then they would have hardware support for extra data structures. So instead of just having one CR0 register, 
you could have some hardware support that can keep a copy of the state of the virtualized guest OS. This should make some of the costs of doing virtualization less expensive because you don't have to emulate as much in software. But it's certainly not necessary to provide an emulated OS environment.